Oh, so um, I, um, I am Stuart. Uh, I know I'm the last person on. So I'm going to try and keep the energy levels up. Um, I work at the Open Data Institute as a software engineer. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about some of the work we've been doing with Comma Chameleon, uh, a desktop CSV editor with reuse in mind. Um, I work in the ODI Labs team, which is the R&D side of the ODI. We build stuff, work on research projects, to help develop standards and techniques for using and publishing data in particular, open data. Uh, I started at the ODI three years ago, and as we were a new team, we had the pr pretty unique opportunity to try and get things right from the start. Um, and one of the things we talked about is whether we wanted to do 20% time, um, which I'm sure everyone knows the, about the concept uh, of, of that uh, through Google and things like that. Uh, while it doesn't exist in any real form at Google, from, from what I hear, uh, we still thought it was a good idea to try out. Um, we started doing our 20% time um, every Friday uh, each week, but it just quickly became unwieldy because other stuff would take over. And we're like, well, we've got to get this finished, so let's not do it this week, but we'll definitely do it next week. Um, and we just, we just found it just wasn't happening. And plus, and one day a week, um, it was really difficult to get anything significant done. So we, uh, we then decided every fifth week we would spend a whole, we'd have a, an inno innovation week, although well, most of the time we're supposed to be innovating anyway. Um, but it meant we had a decent chunk of time to, to, um, to, to develop something significant. Um, some of the things we've worked on, uh, this, this is from me, this is a Git data publisher. Uh, it gives non-technical people the ability to publish data sets on GitHub. Um, they fill out, fill out a quick form, um, fill out some metadata, add, add the data sets, and it, as well as publishing it in GitHub, it uses GitHub pages underneath the hood to automatically create human-readable uh, web pages with machine-readable metadata underneath, as well as doing data previews. Um, if anyone's been to the ODI office, they might have seen this. Uh, this, um, this was a piece, uh, art, piece of artwork by um, an artist called Ellie Harrison. Um, every, time it, uh, every time it monitors the BBC News RSS feed, every time there's a piece of news about the economy, it gives you, gives you some crisps. And the, it, was, it was on a pretty old laptop, the laptop broke. Uh, we can get it to work again. So basically, we rebuilt the uh, we re rebuilt the uh, the code underneath and used the Raspberry Pi, and also um, added a RESTful interface because why not? Um, <laughs> so uh, and we made it tweet and send notifications to Slack and things like that. So that was uh, that was good fun. And it's uh, it's recently come back to the office. It was on loan at um, Somerset House in, the, uh, in London on the. Uh, a big, uh, they had a data uh, exhibition, so that was uh, that went on tour, and uh, I'd like to think I I did some art, but I didn't really. <laughs> uh, my colleague James has also built uh, a plugin that allow, uh, a Chrome plugin that allows you to see diffs for CSV files on um, on GitHub, and we've also done a lot of smaller projects like internal dashboards. We've done some research on things like blockchain and small libraries that work on top of some of our bigger projects. Um, but we've been focused quite a lot on CSV in the last few years. In the early days of open data, I've been plugging, a, plugging away at this for, for quite some time. There's a lot of talk about linked data, semantic web, and there's loads of potential there. But a lot of data publishers are non-technical people. So a lot of open data you're going to see is going to come as, as CSV, which is actually great because it suits publishers because it's dead easy to publish. You don't have to, you don't have to be particularly technical to write a CSV. Uh, and it suits for users because it's plain text and super easy to parse. However, flexibility is not always a good thing, as you will see. Um, we've seen a lot of examples of, uh, of badly, um, badly, published, uh, badly published CSVs. But um, this is an extract from a PDF showing the 2013 New Year's Honours list published on GovUK. Um, alongside this, uh, this PDF, and I, I was looking some time ago. Um, I saw a CSV. I thought, great, we can probably do something with this. So I downloaded it, opened it in LibreOffice, and saw this. <laughs> so this is this is quite a uh, quite an extreme example. But I think from looking at it, I, I'm pretty sure someone just went con control control A, control C, control V into Excel 
File, Save As, CSV, job done, right? <laughs> so it made it difficult, if not impossible, to work with. So this inspired uh, us to build CSV Lent, um, which I think a couple of people talk, talked about. If there's anyone that was at CSV Conf the year before last, my colleague James uh, did a talk about this. Um, we had some funding for central government to do it. Um, it allows you to upload a CSV or specify uh, a URL and see how reuse ready your CSV is. As a selection of some of the types of warnings and errors that we check for. Uh, I won't go into them all, but things like if it's, uh, if it's hosted on the web, things like, um, things like content type um, and then uh, invalid characters, inconsistent values, miss, uh, blank rows, that, that sort of thing. So we, we can, you can go and check your, uh, check your CSV, get your, uh, get your results. So far, so good. Uh, you can also specify a schema. We've based the schema on, uh, on, on the JSON table schema. Uh, and includes things like whether the column's required, the data type, uh, column title, and value constraints, which is generally via a regular expression. And we're, uh, we also, if you, any of you saw Jenny talk about um, CSV on the web, we just start, we're just starting to support CSV on the web as well. That's currently supported in the Ruby gem that, un, that uh, sits underneath the CSV lib, CSV lib website. Um, but we haven't yet got full CSV on the web support on the, on the website, but that's coming. Um, one of the biggest users of CSV in its schemas has been the local government association in the UK. They offered funding to local councils to help publish their data, um, providing it met a given schema. So they provide a schema, people could, would get the, get the CSVs out of whatever system they were using or generating themselves by hand, go onto CSV Lint and um, and check if it met the schema. If it did, then they uploaded it. Um, so, uh, but the main issue here is a lot of people are still using Excel to generate CSV files, generally via a save as. The problem is Excel is designed for building spreadsheets, and spreadsheets are not CSVs, as most of you, most of you know. And for some time I've been thinking, especially with the, the LGA project, um, I've been thinking, uh, wouldn't it be great if someone built a CSV native editor? So rather than going, I'm, I've got my CSV, I'm going to file save as, go into something, something like CSV lint, check it against the schema, and, um, and go back and fix, fix the problems. Wouldn't it be great if you could just do this on the fly, and um, someone built a CSV native editor, which stopped the common problems before they cropped up. So uh, this is where this wonderful bit of tech um, came in. Uh, Jeremy earlier was talking about Electron as well. Um, it's you, if, for those of you who don't know, have never used it before, it's, built, it's used to build GitHub's Atom editor. And it allows people who primarily develop for the web to build uh, desktop applications using, uh, using uh, Node and, well, using JavaScript, basically. You have Node in the back end and you have the front end JavaScript on the front end. Um, which is great. Uh, I'm not uh, a JS guy, really. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting there, but... It's, uh, it's still a bit of a uh, challenge for one person to learn all this in a week and build something. But uh, luckily, we had help in the form of free interns over the summer. So uh, Ben, Stephen, and Daniel, um, I managed to convince them this was a good thing to do. Uh, they, they, they weren't 100% they were convinced, but, uh, and I, but I caught to them for a week, and we got cracking. Um, we put together user stories. We did it properly, um, tackled them. One by one, and it, you know, we, we had something. It's a simple stripped down CSV editor, removes much of the cruft you see in Excel and OpenOffice. It's just dead, dead, dead simple. You can add rows and columns, and uh, you can also uh, validate CSV. Calls that to the CSV Lint undocumented API um, and returns the results straight away. It will show you, uh, you if you click on the error down there. So, you, for example, empty row, if you click on that, it will show you which row is empty. Um, but obviously, for this is a this is a very simple example. Um, it will show you wh where the where the errors occur where the errors occurred. So uh, you can fix any errors in place uh, before you go ahead and upload. Uh, fix your errors, validate again. Uh, we'll, uh, we saw some. Talk about data packages as well. We can uh, we, we we have that as support, so um, you can add you can go export as data package. Um, 
export, ex export the data package, add your, uh, add your metadata, add your license keywords, and uh, it will also generate a, a basic schema for you as well. If you click generate headers, it will sort of try and work out the schema. Um, and it will export it as a, as a zipped data package. Only problem is we had a nice desktop editor, but we still had to cross the hardest hurdle of software development. We couldn't think of a name. So we, naturally, we, we, we reached out to, the, um, to the, the rest of the ODI team, and uh, the, best, the best name was Comic Chameleon. And that is the logo, designed by our wonderful intern, Ben, um, who said software developers aren't artistic. Um, we didn't stop there, though. Um, I've done a bit more work with a big, big refactor of the code, um, writing tests. I've uh, got continuous deployment of binaries now, so every time we push it to master, it, it pushes a new binary up to, up to GitHub, new version. Um, bug fixes and a new website where I shamelessly listed the same template as the CSB Conf website because I have absolutely no imagination. Um, and I've also had further support for schemas. Uh, now you can open a schema in CSV lint format. Uh, it will automatically add the correct column names for you. What I want to do further down the line is to add live validation for each column. So if, um, if for example, one of those should, has to be an integer, if you try to put in, uh, if you try to put in uh, some al alphabetical characters, it will go red and tell you you can't do that. Um, or, uh, uh, also, just ma matching against um, matching against re regular expressions, that sort of thing. That's something I want to add further down the line. Um, so that's up for you to download, install, and tinker with. Really, really happy to get any uh, any any bug reports. There are bugs, so yeah, but, uh, have a look. Have a look on the GitHub repo, and uh, if there are any bugs that haven't already been reported, please let me know, and I'll try and get around to fixing them. Um, but there's always room for improvement. Uh, I want to add an offline mode because at the moment it calls the CSV Lint API, which isn't ideal. Uh, obviously, if you're off, offline, you can't validate, which sucks. Um, uh, better support for Windows and Linux at the moment. I'm limited by the OS that's on my laptop, so I don't get to do much testing in uh, on, particularly on Windows. Uh, more support for schemas, as I mentioned before. Uh, CSV on the web support, I'm really keen to do. I'd really like to do auto-publication to GitHub, which would be a case of just file, file export. Um, that support as well was an idea I had. Um, I keep getting ideas, and it's probably dangerous. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to sort of sign off by talking a bit more generally about... Um, about why innovation time works so well for us. Um, it allows us to try new techniques and tools and build things without the pressure of having to find funding. And we can solve, uh, solve problems for colleagues. We've got a whiteboard from to su suggest, um, suggest ideas. Uh, and increasingly, we want to involve other members of the team, non-technical people. Um, and we're starting to teach some of them how to code as well. Uh, on a personal note as well, I've got two kids punishing homebrew schedule, and I don't really have time for side projects outside of, uh, outside of work, so I'm really super lucky to have um, the opportunity to grow as a developer. Um, so, yeah, I, that's quite short, but um, I, I'd love to hear any questions. You, you can see the uh, website is com at commachameleon.io, um, and I'm at Pez Hurley on Twitter. So if there's any questions, comments, please let me know. Yes, they are. Yeah. The, um, We're trying to support both. Basically, is the uh, is is the thinking behind it. Um, are they convertible into each other or something? Not at the moment, but that is, that's that's something that we could that we could quite easily do. We we just want to we we want we don't want to we don't want to prescribe anything. And as there's these two these two divergent technologies, we want to really be supporting both ideally. Um, but, but yeah, at the moment we are very much focused on the um, on the JSON table schema rather than uh, CSV on the web. But that's that's something we want to do more on.
Anyone else? Yes. Is there any limit to uh, the number of rules that that uh, CFD editor can be um, <laughs> It might. I, I think, actually, I, th I think there's a hard limit in Electron JS to about 20 meg. I think uh, 20, anything over 20 meg will probably cry. Um, but yeah, again, I haven't, um, I haven't really tested it in, too, too, uh, in anything too, too heavyweight. Um, again, the, the idea really is it's for, more for creating rather than editing. Well, it's, per it's perfectly capable of doing that. And we can also import Excel files as well. That's, um, that's something I didn't mention, but that is a thing we can do. Hiya. So, interesting project. So, so you think like a validation plugin for um, for, for Google Docs? That, that is something that um, that is something that uh, that occurred to me. I think part partly it's out of out of wanting to experiment with um, with new tools and techniques because I've never used Electron before, um, and partly. Um, yeah, I think that, that's that, that's mainly that's mainly it, and I mean that's that's something that we'd certainly because it's the right tool for the right job, right? If people already use if people already use um, Google Docs or or whatever, then then it's a, it's a good idea to get them get them using that. But I think again, it's going back to it's going back to the Google spreadsheets and and Excel and Open Office. They're not really designed with reuse in mind. There's, it's giving you a little bit too much freedom. So the idea was, as well as the validation, it was also giving people, get, uh, removing some of that flexibility that, that gives us, get, that lets you probably do a bit too much. So, yeah. Hiya. Um, so, your question about your, your 20% time yeah. as opposed to the, the specific project. Um, how, how is that organised? How is it structured? Do you, do you, do you so, we. Sorry? It's pretty much it's pretty much do do what you like. We've got this whiteboard, and people do people do suggest things. Um, so occasionally it will it will come out of. Look, we had some we did some blockchain some research on blockchain, and that was that was something that was suggested to us, um, and other, other little projects like that. So it's 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 a mishmash of things really. So the way it's all, the way it's organised. So we have um, we used to do two week long sprints. We now do one week sprints. So we do we do four sprints. And then the fifth sprint is um, is is an innovation week. So that's basically how it works. But yeah, like I'd, like I say, I'd like to work more with uh, more with internal teams and try and solve some of the problems that they've got because I think developers are very good uh, at solving problems. They're not always particularly brilliant at identifying them. So that's why I'd like to work you know internally a bit more with people and actually find out what problems there are. Um, that's solving. Anyone else? No? Cool. Well, you can finish early. <laughs>